Okay, perfect. Well, today we're going to go over how to enable, uh, as I've already said, your AI chatbot to handle complex QA. Uh, the, one of the, the great things about being able to, you know, use or have the complex QA is because a lot of times uh, to get to the answer is not a straightforward or, or a uh, single step process. Uh, you may have to ask follow on questions to get additional information from your users. And by having the ability to, you know, create multi turn or uh, complex questions and answers, you actually are engaging uh, with, with the, the, the participant in the chat bot. And it also helps to make sure that you provide accurate information during that process. The other thing that the multi-turn QA also allows for is it basically engages uh, the participant a lot more. So they're actually having a conversation. And so that actually provides better interaction within your chat bot and highly, a higher likelihood for continued engagement and, and pass through. Uh, the other thing it does, the multi-turn and the complex questioning is you typically have a straightforward chat flow, uh, which is your main workflow. And the multi-turn actually allows for you to have basically like a mini workflow embedded in that chat flow. So it allows for you to have a breakout uh, of a workflow process and then have it actually return back to the main chat flow at any time and it will remember your place. And, and it's actually fairly simple and easy to set up and we're gonna, we will go over that. Uh, by the way, just as a reminder, if you do have any questions during this uh, uh, webinar, feel free just to type those questions into the chat. Uh, I will take moments to pause uh, 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 during the presentation to see if there's any of those questions. And Jim, my colleague, is monitoring that chat and will also stop me if needed by if it's a pressing question I need to answer right then and there as well. So the first thing we're going to actually touch upon is how you enable it. Uh, most of the multi turn QA is actually done from your main question and answer area where you actually create your question and answer pairs. And uh, that's where we'll actually get started. So I'll actually jump over to my Juji bot and show you how I'm going to create that uh, initial uh, uh, multi-turn request or complex chat box question and answer. Okay, so again, right from your, your, your QA, you can either start with an existing, so let's say you want to add a workflow to an existing uh, QA pair, you can do that as well. Uh, you can also uh, create a new question as well as part of that process. Uh, I am, you know, I, if I was doing a new QA, I'd press this button, but I'm, I'm actually using an existing question uh, to go forward with. And one of the first ones I'm gonna do uh, is this number two here. Uh, could you check if my battery is still on stock? And the cool thing about that is there's actually a built-in ability for, you know, these processes Within Juji, where you know, if you ask for something in stock, they then will ask a, a follow-up question like, you know, what is the SKU number? And there's actually a function built into the system that allows for us to capture that and for it to check against it. Uh, and, and just to give you an idea of what that looks like, uh, before I actually go in and show you, I'm just going to ask a question. I'm going to ask the question, and the, the system is going to go and engage that multi-turn QA and go from there. Let me refresh my session here and get started back in. Here we go. I've asked a question. 
And now it's actually engaging into the, the multi-turn. So it, instead of just giving you the answer, it's asking for some additional information. So I've already typed, you know, typed in my fake SKU to look for it. And now it's looking for the, the SKU and it shows that it's in stock and it just tells us. Now, the one thing I want you to notice here is that it, we still have our main chat flow. Then when I asked the question, it went out and took care of that process, that multi-turn request, and then came back to the chat flow. Uh, so it's going to, you know, you're, it's going to, you know, remember the place where you started. And, and that's important because, you know, if they, you, you don't want them to get derailed, so to speak, from the rest of the chat, if they pop in with a specific question. So with that being said, I'm going to show you how I set that up. Okay, so first from this QA area, you'll see there's a button that says uh, multi-turn QA. And just to show you what that looks like, because it changes a little bit when you're, uh, you know, editing versus new, is you'll see here this icon that looks basically like a sideways V with the, the dots on the end of it. I will click that uh, to actually start the, the you know, multi-turn request. Uh, incidentally, this is also the same button you choose to add media, which was last week's uh, webinar. But, you know, you'll get to know that quite, quite well. So I'm going to go in now. And one of the first things it's going to do is you will click on this button to add a, a panel. And you'll notice that it looks a lot like your main chat flow. Uh, so it's actually going to create a mini workflow within that process. Then from there, you can actually enter in when, once you've created the, the panel. You'll enter in what your follow-up question is to ask. And then, of course, you're looking for uh, the answer. And I, I set this up as a, a, a yes, no question. And, and so it's going to look for either a, a positive or a negative, uh, or a, a not negative, but a non-positive result. And, and you'll see here that it'll, it'll guide it accordingly within the process. Now, I wanted to show you if you, let's say you want to engage one of those built-in features like the SKU, you're, you're gonna click on this search, looks like a, a magnifying glass here, and it, it'll actually come up and you, you can then you know, type in your search of what you're looking for and it'll narrow, it, narrow down the results and you'll select that. And once I select that, when I go in to create the trigger, it's going to look for the, the, the yes or the no response. And if it's yes, I, I am then coming back to ask them the SKU. And that, that, that SKU question was created automatically when I selected that. Okay. Then I, then from there, if, if it's, you know, if the answer is yes, I created the extended reply, which then gives me another panel. And from there, I can then provide the uh, information back to them to let them know that it was in stock or not in stock. If, if the answer was in the negative, like it was a no, uh, we actually have a process as that as well. So if it's not equal to, you'll notice that there's there's either equal or not, that not equal is the exclamation part with the equal sign. And if it's not equal, it then kicks over to the, uh, the create another panel with the extended reply. You know, I just click on this plus button and then it provides the uh, uh, unavailable message. And from this, I actually used uh, the, the, the function again. I actually clicked on this FX and it actually brought in the user attribute uh, from the, the SKU number that it was looking for. And, and so, and that was all automatic within the system. I, you know, I just clicked on that button where it says function and it then creates that multi-turn QA. 
and the answer process. I'm gonna pause right there and see if there's any questions. And keeping in mind, if I wanted to have multiple you know, questions to ask, all I would do is just continue that back and forth with the same process I just showed you in the system. Hey, Jim, is there any questions pending? Not yet, Steve. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I am now going to go back to the QA board here. But before I do that, there's another form of uh, QA as well. And, and this is like, uh, it's more like it's engaging in a conversation. And so uh, let's say somebody asked a, a question like, what is tuition? What, what, what's the price of tuition? Uh, we could then just give them the price of the tuition, but then I, I wanted to get some more helpful information to them, ask them more, another question. So uh, in, in this specific instance uh, on the multi-turn, they asked for what the tuition is. I give them the answer, then I follow back and ask them uh, if they would like some more information on financial aid. And then when they reply back, I can then give them more information on financial aid. And keep in mind, I can create several branches. Let, let's say um, I wanted to give them information on uh, how military uh, veterans handle or existing military uh, handle uh, financial aid and what programs are available. And so I can actually go down the, I could call it a rabbit hole, go down this, these different pathways within and have multiple directions going out on the, on the QA process. So I'm gonna show you that now. Again, I'm in my QA area here. And this time I'm gonna to go to my tuition. Now, it, now I'm first gonna show you what the result is and then we're gonna jump back in and I'll show you how I created that. So now I'm gonna ask, And so it's, it's asking how much is tuition. It gives me my answer. So I still give them the information they're seeking. And then I re-ask, I ask them another question. Uh, I see that you're asking for information on tuition. Would you like information on financial aid options? And I can click yes. And then I just put in a, a, a regular paragraph on that. And you'll see that then brings me more additional information. Now, let's say I had said no. Uh, I can then give them a response back and tell them if they change their mind on the information, how they can uh, get that information at a later time. So I'm going to say no. And my message back was, if you change your mind, just type in financial aid in the message window. And then that, that would actually give me a, a additional information for the user. And so I actually give them like almost a little mini help, help information in, in the response back. And I did this all through that multi-term QA. Again, you'll notice that this allows us to more deeply engage uh, with the potential client or the user within the chat bot. And so, you know, you're getting that engagement and they're asking questions about, you know, and answering questions. And so you actually have a full conversation going on in the process while you're sharing information. Now I'm gonna show you how I did that. So I'm on my QA here. Again, uh, if, if, if I was creating a new one, I, I click on the, the sideways V with the, the dots on the end. If I'm in editing, I'm gonna click on the edit pencil, just so you know that the interface is still the same. And so here, I, you'll see that I, I've, added, I've added the one panel. And then I put in my question here. Now, I, again, I, I can have this be, you know, uh, multiple uh, areas, okay? I, I could 
branch out into different directions if I choose to. And so again, you know, I ask the question, if they say yes in the positive, then I provide them the, the answer. Uh, and if it's in the negative, I can then provide them the answer. And I can then even re-ask a different question to say, are you interested in uh, additional information? Uh, again, this allows for us to have like embedded uh, conversations within uh, the QA process. And again, it acts much like what the main chat flow looks like, but it's a, a, a mini workflow built into the QA process. Okay, now I'm actually going to show you uh, building one completely from scratch, just so you can see all the steps one more time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add a, a multi term to an existing. Okay, so I, I they, they're asking what's the admission criteria. And so I'm now going to create a multi term process. I'm, I'm clicking the plus sign to add my panel. Uh, I can have this to where I can give them information, I can request user input. I could use a single answer, multi-choice, uh, multi-choice question. Uh, I could have it just be a, a free text question where I'm just getting uh, an answer back from them. Uh, or I can have it be like a yes, no, you know, in, uh, in the affirmative. And that's what I'm gonna do today. So I, I, I'm asking the question because a lot of times when you your, your, your admission criteria, they need to get their transcript. And so I'm, I'm doing a follow on question to get additional information from them. Okay. So I'm going to create the trigger. Since I use the yes, no, it's the pre built intent areas. So it's automatically going to yak, you know, if my response is yes, then give me a quick acknowledgement here. Uh, now, I also need to add the response for if it's a no. So again, I'm going to the trigger. I'm going to use a pre-built intent. I'm going to select no. And keep in mind, if you had a free text answer, and you're getting a free text response back. You could also, on the trigger, uh, you look for like may, may contain or similar to. So you can look for, let's say, a combination of words or specific words, and if that falls in there, then you can give them a response as well. So it could actually have uh, more of a flow if you'd like to do that. Hey, Steve, there was a question from Carolyn. What would the important from flow do? Just wanted to throw that in there before you went too uh, far on. It, 
let, let's say you had already created a workflow that you're, you know, you, there's, let's say another question already has the, a similar workflow, you could bring that in and so you could bring, bring in a pre-built flow. Uh, it's basically a way for you to reuse something that you've already created. Apparently, did that answer your question, by the way? I'll, I'll, I'll create another one and show you what that looks like here in just a second. Yeah, she's OK. Keep going, Steve. Yeah, I'd still love to see it if you don't mind. OK, I can do that. OK, so now I've created this multi-turn response from scratch. So let me go create another one so you can see what it's like to do the import. So again, I'm going through that same process as I did before. Wait, I, oh, sorry, I just messed up here. Let me go back and do this again. Okay, so when I clicked on that embedded chat flow, you'll see that I have existing uh, multi-turn set up already, right? And so I can then just select one and then it automatically brought in that predefined version. Did that did that answer your question? Did that, that work for you, Caroline? Yes, thank you. Perfect. Okay, now again, one of the main things to always remember when you do changes like this, this is the same tip I give at the end of each webinar is you always want to update and deploy your chat bot. Otherwise those workflows would not be embedded because even though we are working within the QA area, we are adding workflow processes just like the main chat flow. And that, that multi-turn you know, or complex question process, that workflow we just created would not be engaged in the chat until we deploy so that's a little bit different because you, if you recall if you uh added if you add new qa pairs or you edit a qa pair it's there automatically without having to deploy but since i'm engaging a workflow process you need to make sure you deploy every time And with that being said, uh, I'm, I will first, I'll, I'll put these links into the chat window as well, real quick. And then uh, if there's any questions that you may have, please let me know. This first link is a link to our next uh, um, webinar. Our next webinar is going to be dealing with uh, embed, you know, the functions. So those built-in tools that are available within Juji. Uh, and, and so that is actually a huge time saver. So there's already this tool set available when you do a function. And we're gonna show that in our next webinar 
process. And so the first link is that. The second link is a view to our collections. And if you're unaware of what the collections are, uh, it's it's basically our, uh, one sec here, let me just get to our collections. Uh, the collections is a, a list of all of our current webinars that are going to be available with the next month. And you'll see that we've added several new ones. Uh, we're also going to go over uh, how to, to generate dynamic chat messages, uh, how to uh, embed Google in Analytics into your chat bot, uh, how to, you know, that basic upkeep and improvement that you can do continuously on your chatbot. We're going to have a webinar on that and also how to use your API to connect 2G chatbot to third party. And that's going to be a big one. I think a lot of people have questions on that. And so that's our lineup for the webinars over the next month. And with that being said, I'm just going to pause right there and see if there's any questions. Don't see any, don't see anything on the board yet. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now. And